gospel hearts in spirit and truth. The offering that we receive tonight, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless it for our bus ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, heaven is a wonderful place, and I've never been there. About that. Yeah. And my dreams, I do. I go back, but I told somebody the other day, I've seen Jesus. And they said, uh-oh, you've seen Jesus? I said, yeah, I've, I've seen him in the Bible. My mother taught me about him. He could make things vivid, you know. When she uh, get pots and pans and Goliath and all became real. Make swords out of big old spoons and all that stuff. And she told me all about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and uh, of course Daniel and uh, David and Goliath and all that. And I believed they was real. I didn't believe they were. She told me they were. Then eventually, she changed my thoughts to to the real thing, to the real Jesus, the real character. So I got my idea about Jesus from her. It was the first one to ever teach me about heaven. And like Dr. Rambo said, the first one to ever tell me about you, Lord. But this little song is, uh, we had an old guy here. Well, old guy, I'm old now. His name was Doc Latimer. Anybody remember him? But we, we get in the key of D. That's two sharps. He didn't know that. He'd just play whatever it, it sounded right, like Jim. It, wherever Jim is, there you are. And uh, we'd play Holy Hills of Heaven, Call Me play each step I take, and we play Jesus is a coming. Uh, can't you feel it in the air? We get stuck in, in, in D, and then I'd go to another song, and he, he couldn't remember which one we were on. So I had to change keys so he'd know it's a different song. But this little song says, the holy hills of heaven call me. I can just, sometimes my mother passes through my dreams, and I know it was her, but I can't remember what the dream was about. So right now I'm going to dream a little about about my mom and daddy. The holy hills of heaven call me to mansions bright across the sea where loved ones wait and crowns are given and the hills of home start calling me. This house of flesh is but a prison bars of bone hold my soul but the doors of clay are gonna burst wide open when the angel says my spirit free I'll take my flight like the mighty eagle when the hills of home start calling me well I see love ones over yonder 
tears are gone and hearts are free and from the throne my savior beckons and the hills of home keep calling me this house of flesh is but a prison bars of bone oh my soul but the doors of clay gonna burst wide open when the angel sits my spirit free I'll take my flight like the mighty eagle when the hills of home start calling me I'll take my flight like the mighty eagle when the hills of home start calling me Open your Bible tonight, please, into the book of Proverbs. We're going to begin in verse 14 and look at several verses tonight. Probably more of a Bible study than a sermon, but if I get preachy, then just let the preach come out. Don't worry about me. And uh, I do want to give a little plug for our services on Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to preach both Sunday morning and Sunday night on Noah. And I want to uh, preach Sunday morning on Noah. The title of Sunday morning sermon is called, Nice Job, Noah. Sunday night's going to be called, Noah, What Happened? You know, we sometimes stop reading the story of Noah after the ark. You know, but his life didn't end there. When he got off the ark, you know, things weren't quite as well as they should have been. So we'll ask Noah, Noah, what happened? Uh, but that's Sunday. That's, you got to wait till Sunday to get all that, okay? That's just a free little commercial for Sunday. Uh, but open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 14, and you see in your outline we're going to be all over the place. We're going to be all in the book of Proverbs, but we're going to be back and forth and all of that. We're in a series that we're calling Solomon Says. Solomon Says, the wisest man ever. What does he say about life? A whole lot of stuff. 31 chapters of stuff about life. And uh, Solomon wrote almost all of those, a very good majority of those. And there's times in Solomon's life where he had to learn the hard way. We know some of his story. And uh, there's sometimes uh, in, in the Bible we read some of the good things Solomon did. And God gave him wisdom. We know God gave him wisdom because he asked God for it. Uh, but sometimes he got that wisdom not just as a direct, uh, you know, blessing, but he had to learn the lesson the hard way or the good way. And I don't know about you, but sometimes experience is the best teacher. You know, if you make a mistake, uh, you know not to do that again. If you work on things and you put two wires together that shouldn't go together, you learn not to put those two wires toge together. You learn the hard way. You do something and you do it right. Praise God, you learn how to do it right. So you do it that way over and over and over again. Solomon is going to tell us tonight one more thing. He's already told us, so Solomon's already said, better is better. He's told us that your spirit is spiritual. He said, just because you aren't sick doesn't mean that you are healthy. And tonight we're going to see what else Solomon says. So look in chapter 14, verse 2, and stay in your seat, please. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 2. Here's what Solomon says. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Tonight Solomon says, what does he say? He says, don't be afraid of anything but God. Don't be afraid of anything but God. Let's pray. Father... I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you, Lord, for helping me this week as I studied your word and prepared for this. God, thank you for, for teaching me some things. And I pray tonight, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may use me to teach your people something. That will help us, Lord, not be fearful but just to trust. And we understand, Lord, we're living in very tumultuous days politically, socially, economically, medically. We're living in days that are unprecedented. But, Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to fear nobody but God. Help us to have respect and, and awe and reverence to our Savior. And we thank you tonight, God, for your word, all it means to us. I thank you for those that are here. Would you speak to us tonight? Would you teach us? Please, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. The phrase, this may be, I don't know, not quite as old as Patch the Pirate, but a few years old now, there's a phrase, maybe five or six years ago, and it was, uh, it was, on, it was a logo on T-shirts, 
They had their own brand. You can go in certain stores, probably not Walmart or Target, but other type of stores, and there'd be a whole section on an article of clothing. It, they would, I remember they would have hats, and they would have shirts, and, and uh, it, probably any kind of clothing you could buy with something written on it. It would say these two words, no fear. People, you know, I guess tattoos are still in style, but there was a time when, I mean, everybody was getting tattoos. I, some of my friends got no fear tattoos. And, you know, so no fear, is a, it's, it was a popular saying, uh, but that saying simply is not true because everybody has something that they fear. But fear, somebody said, fear is not a bad thing if it's directed toward the right thing because a person's fear affects their behavior. For instance, I think it's good to be afraid of grizzly bears. Because that means you'll not go up to a grizzly bear and want to pet him on the head because you've seen what happens to somebody when they come into contact with the grizzly bear. Spoiler alert, grizzly bear is going to win. Okay, so you ought to be afraid of grizzly bears or snakes or Heights. I'm not afraid of heights unless it's, you know, way up there. Your fear of heights is a good thing because it will not allow you to go uh, stand outside the side of the Empire State Building on a ledge. You know, because your fear of that, what is it, 100 stories? Your, your fear of falling, and actually the fall is just fine. It's that real sudden stop is what gets you. But, you know, it's okay to be afraid of heights and afraid of, you know, different things. And it's interesting that people have all kind of fears. Solomon has a lot. I mean, you've seen the outline. Solomon has a lot to say about, about fears. There's two meanings for the word fear. First meaning is this, to be afraid of something or someone. We know that, to be afraid of something or someone. It also means to have reverential awe, that's A-W-E, and respect for something or someone. So it's, it's one thing to be afraid of grizzly bears or snakes or heights when it comes to the Empire State Building, but it's a total another thing to have fear of God. Proverbs tells us, or Solomon tells us in Proverbs, that the fear of God is to hate evil. And the fear of the Lord will cause us to walk uprightly, so fearing God will do many things. It'll, it'll keep us safe. It'll also let us be blessed. My grandfather, I've talked much about him. I have got a ton of respect for my grandfather, my, my dad, both of them, but my dad's, uh, my mom's dad in particular. He was a Marine, 40-year uh, Marine, career Marine, uh, Paris Island drill instructor. I mean, he was uh, the Marine of all Marines. I remember my papa when he got cancer, and it came back the second time. He had bone cancer. They got it. It came back about a year and a half later, and uh, I said, Papa, are you, uh, are you afraid to die? He said, well, I, I, buddy, I, I know it's going to get me. I said, but are you afraid? And he said, yeah. I said, I can't believe you're afraid of something, Papa. And Papa told me this. I never will forget it. He said, if a man tells you he has no fears, he's either a fool or a liar. So we all have fears. We all have something that we fear. Proverbs says a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confidence. Everybody has fear of something. It's, it could be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. But Solomon tells us, and here's what it all boils down to, don't be afraid of anything but God. There's two, two main points in your outline. First of all, notice the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Not talking about being afraid of God as far as, oh no, if I do anything wrong, God's going to kill me. God might kill you. Uh, but we ought not fear God so much that, you know, we just can't even, you know, get out of bed in the morning because we're afraid we're going to do something that God's going to punish us. No, don't be, have that kind of fear. We're talking about, though, a, a fear of God in so much that you, 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 fear, you fear disobeying Him. You fear uh, d disappointing Him. You fear doing something that's going to make Him look bad. So a few things about this fear of God. There's three main things. First of all, the fear of the Lord. Notice it's described. It is described. 
The next uh, A through E are a way Solomon describes his fear of God. Uh, by the way, for, don't, never, never forget the smartest man ever. How does he describe fear? What does he say about fear? Letter A, fear is the beginning of knowledge. The beginning of knowledge. Chapter 1, verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's look at that verse backwards. The second part of the verse says, But fools despise wisdom and instruction. In other words, the fool, you know what the Bible says about the fool, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So that same person who says in their heart there is no God, the Bible says, Solomon says, uh, they despise wisdom and instruction. The word despise means pushes it away. We'd be a fool to push away wisdom and instruction. Listen, when some uh, older uh, adult, some uh, more mature Christian, some elder Christian, somebody who's been there, done that, has the t-shirt, wants to give you some instruction and some wisdom, don't push them away. That's foolish. Listen, young people, all of you under 20, don't push away the wisdom and the instruction of your parents. That's foolish. It's foolish when your mom and dad who try to teach you something and tell you something and show you something, you are a fool if you despise it, if you push it away. They're trying to help you. They've been there. They've done that. They have a t-shirt. They've made the mistakes. They're trying to help you where you don't make them. Don't be a fool. Don't push it away. But Solomon says, opposite of that, fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Society says, well, if you can get a good education, if you can get your children to the best school system, then that will take care of all their problems. But the Bible says knowledge begins with the fear of God. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If you don't fear God, you're a fool. It's the beginning of knowledge. Letter B, it's the hatred of evil. Chapter 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Another characteristic of a believer who fears God is they'll hate evil. And they'll hate evil because God hates evil. All kinds of evil. Evil words, the evil way, evil thoughts, evil actions. Without a doubt, if we fear God, we will, we will hate evil, we'll push away evil, we'll despise evil. A person that fears the Lord won't get involved in things that are evil. They won't cheat on their spouse. They won't spread gossip. They won't do things that, please, that displease the Lord because to fear God means you hate that stuff. Let her see. We are moving right along. I'll get you all home by 9.15. Let her see. It's the beginning of wisdom. You, you say, you just said that, didn't you? No, I said knowledge was letter A. Letter C is wisdom. There's a huge difference between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom is applying knowledge. Wisdom is, knowledge is getting information. It's getting, it's getting facts. It's getting uh, doctrine. It's getting things into your mind, to your body. That's knowledge. It's receiving, it's receiving information. And wisdom is doing right by that. Knowledge says, knowledge says, uh, okay, this is what's right. Wisdom is doing that which is right. Knowledge is learning, well, that's wrong. Wisdom is not doing it because it's wrong. We all know folks that have a lot of knowledge but are lacking in wisdom. We can name names. It's one thing to have knowledge. It's one thing to... Know all the Bible stories. It's one thing to have every one of Patch the Pirate's songs memorized. It's one thing for, like Brother Roger said, for your mother to teach you all the Bible stories. It's one thing to have Bible knowledge. It's another thing to have wisdom. What do you do with knowledge? Well, that's wisdom. If you act upon it, if you do what's right, if you don't do it's wrong, that's what wisdom is. A lot of people tonight sitting in jails uh, who have all kind of Bible knowledge... A lot of people across America 
know all about Noah and the ark. <laughs> and uh, David and Goliath and Moses and the Red Sea and, and, uh, and uh, Isaac and Abraham and know all about Jacob and, and all about uh, Peter and Paul and know all about Daniel, the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A lot of folks in this world have a whole lot of uh, Bible knowledge, but they're not applying that knowledge. They have no wisdom. And the Bible tells us, Solomon says... The beginning of, uh, the beginning of uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You begin to act upon what you know if you fear God. <clears throat> Letter D. It is walking uprightly. I like this verse. It's the second time we've read it today. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Solomon's talking again about behavior. The word uprightness. I'll give you, I'm going to give you a whole semester of Bible college in about five seconds. The word uprightness means, listen, write it down, right living. Isn't that easy? I just gave you a whole semester of Bible college in one sentence. Uprightness means right living. We should do right because we fear the repercussions. That's uprightness. That's what Solomon said. Solomon said, I mean, it's right there in the Bible. He that walketh in his uprightness, in other words, he that lives right, he does that because he fears the Lord. But the opposite is, he that's perverse in his ways despiseth him. We show how much fear we have of God by how we behave. Walking uprightly. The reason I don't smoke is not because I fear lung cancer or emphysema or health problems. No, it's because I fear God. The reason I don't drink alcohol is not because I fear getting a DUI or I fear my liver falling out or I, I fear all the, the legal repercussions. No, the reason I don't drink, well, it's stupid, but because I fear God. And the reason I don't cheat, I don't steal, the reason I don't lie, the reason I don't, uh, and you too, the reason we don't do those things in our life is because, not because we fear the police or we fear getting in trouble or we fear the, the health problems. No, we, we ought we to oughta do right and not do wrong because we fear the Lord. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. I watch a lot of these crime shows, and it's interesting to me how occasionally one of the, the bad guys, they'll get off, uh, they'll be found innocent because of some technicality. You know, there was, there was one, um, the lawyer, the, the, either defense lawyer or the, uh, the prosecuting attorney, misquoted some kind of precedence way back in 1809 or whatever. And because he misquoted it, the case was thrown out and this rapist was released back into the streets. It's, 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 it's possible to be found innocent or to not be uh, arrested or put in jail in our legal system because of technicalities. But let me remind you, there's no technicality with God. We will not get off without being punished. <laughs> He sees all. He knows all. He will punish the evildoers. So we ought to fear God so we live right. Letter E, uh, it is the last thing under this description is it is the instruction of wisdom. It is the instruction of wisdom. Look how, look how, look how right to the point Solomon is in Proverbs 15, 33. The fear of the Lord is so we know it's going to describe for the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. That word instruction, it means it deals with correction and discipline. In other words, sometimes God has to discipline us. Sometimes God has to correct us. When I was a young person, a kid, man, I feared getting in trouble by my mom and dad. Especially mom. I mean, dad, 
Not quite as mean as mom was. And mom wasn't mean. She was just, you know, she was just mom. And my, my mom never said, you wait till your dad gets home. Oh, no, Jack. We wanted dad to get home first because we know mom would forget about it. And there was none of this, none of this, you know, when we get home, you're no, in the grocery store, in a restaurant, at Granny or Charlie's house, Nanny and Papa's house, at a friend's house, if we were there and we got in trouble, I mean, right there, we got smacked or kicked or poked or pinched or ear pulled or something. I mean, they didn't wait till we got home. No, they didn't believe in this time out garbage. This, uh, go stay in the corner. No, sir. No, sir. You, you weren't able to stand much when I was a kid. Part of the problem with society today, there's too many parents that do time out instead of, you know, other things to discipline their children. But that's a sermon for another day. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, yeah, here's where I'm going. I used to fear. I used to, I used to be so worried. I, it used to be motivation for me to do good, to be good, so I didn't get in trouble. I hated getting in trouble. I hated to have something taken away from me. I hated having, listen, Nintendo taken away from me. I'm aging myself. Man, I was, I mean, you get right to where Mario, he's fixing to, he's fixing to save the princess. Get in your room, boy. <laughs> I'm almost done. I don't care. They'd unplug it or whatever. I used to fear, I used to fear not being able to watch Monday night baseball. You only had three channels, and on Monday night, 8 o'clock, ABC, it was, um, Oh, what's the, the two famous uh, baseball announcers? Uh, anyways, and they would have the ba- game of the game of the week, and that was the only game all week. And I used to fear. So I can't believe. Mama said I can't watch the game. I used to I used to just get on my nerves so bad. It anyway, it motivated me. Are you listening? It motivated me to do right because I didn't like getting getting corrected. I didn't like getting that discipline. I feared the instruction of my parents. I feared the instruction of my coaches. Nothing worse than for your coach to say, Grimes, take off running. What would I do? We used to have to run poles. You remember doing poles, Brother Steve? Foul pole to foul pole. You sprint from, from, left, from the right field foul pole. You sprint to center field. Then you jog. And then you turn around. You sprint to center field, then you jog. Do that for about 30 minutes. Your legs are burning. You're spitting cords, you know. You've got a cramp everywhere. You've got a muscle, and you're, you're begging God to make it stop. And that, that was coach's discipline. I used to fear that. I used to fear my boss, his, his, his discipline. I can't imagine a boss coming to me and telling me, you know, you go home without pay or you don't get your paycheck or by all means you get fired. I used to, things like that used to motivate me just to do right. And I'm saying all that to say this. What does Solomon say? Solomon says, the fear of the Lord is that instruction of wisdom. It is learning uh, your lesson the hard way. It is being corrected and being disciplined. It is uh, acting in such a way that you do not want God to have to do that to you. Because when God does that to you, it's never, ever fun. So the fear of the Lord is described. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great. But I would ask you to listen a little bit faster. The fear of the Lord, number two, is rewarded. If we know there's a principle in the Bible that's, that's good, that's right, we understand uh, that there's a reason for that. And Solomon takes the next uh, few points and he, he's going to tell us what is the benefit, what is the reward of fearing God? What does God give us? How does God bless us? What's the benefit of fearing the Lord? Well, God blesses us, letter A, with the prolonged life. Chapter 10, verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord, here's what it does, here's the blessing, here's the result, prolongeth days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Fear of the Lord prolongeth days. Proverbs 10, 27. Fear of the Lord prolongeth days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Back when newspapers were really popular. Now it's, you know, you got to log in to an account and all that stuff to read the newspaper. And I used to go to the obituaries. I don't know why. Just a weirdo, I guess. Looking for my own name, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, you'd read about these people and they'd live 
80, 90 years old, and you can kind of tell by the obituary what kind of life they had. Uh, you know, you can say so-and-so was uh, passed away. He survived by his wife or her husband of 63 years and all those great things. You can just kind of tell reading an obituary, that man, that woman, they lived a good life. Probably they feared God. I think about uh, my wife's grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. King, two of the godliest people I've ever met. Mr. King lived to be, I think, right at 198, 99, 100. Mrs. King lived to be about 95. Again, two of the godliest people I've ever met. Never heard a, a foul word, never anything off color. Mrs. King always dressed to the nines. I mean, she was always dressed like a lady. It was an amazing. These two people, is it, no, is it a coincidence? They're married nearly 70 years and lived to be almost 100. It's no coincidence. Here's why. Because they feared the Lord. And on the flip side, my brother died at age 34. Burn up in an apartment on dope. The Bible says the wicked, what's it say? The wicked, uh, their years shall be shortened. Now, it doesn't mean anybody who lives to be 100 is a godly believer. It doesn't mean everybody who dies at age 34 is some kind of wicked soul, but the Bible principle is still there. When we fear God, uh, God prolongs our days, gives us better days, gives us longer days, but if we are uh, wicked, our years will be shortened. It's a Bible principle, it's still true. We are blessed with, uh, with the prolonged life, let her be. We're, we're blessed. Uh, the result is confidence. <laughs> Chapter 14, verse 26, tells us, And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. When you fear God, hope you're listening. Hope you're not hot as I am. Hope you're listening. When you fear God... You can be confident in his blessings. And let me add this, and you'll know it's a blessing. You won't ask yourself, well, did God do that or was I just lucky? Did God do that or did all the stars just line up perfectly? Did, did God do that or is today just my lucky day? No, well, you'll know when God blesses. You can have confidence in God's blessings when you fear him. Solomon uses the word refuge. In other words, when you fear God, you've got somewhere to go when the storms of life come. When you fear God, you understand you've got somebody to help you in your time of need. When you fear God, you can be confident that you have the ever-present help. When you fear God, you can trust Him. You can count on Him. You can depend on Him. You can have confidence in Him. When you fear Him, let her see we're also uh, blessed with happiness. <laughs> happiness. Chapter 28, verse 14 says, it's so simple. The Bible is so simple. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. By the way, it's talking about fearing God. Happy is the man that feareth, we can put this word in here, God always. The word happy literally means to be blessed. And you need not be a theologian to understand the word happy also means, here you go, here's semester two in your Bible education. Happy also means happy. I told you Solomon to be so smart sure is simple. Now, some of his verses are like, whoo, that's way out there. But some of them are just right down where we live. Happy, the Bible says the fear of the Lord. Uh, it says that in 28, 14, happy is the man that feareth always. Don't you want to be happy? Don't you want to be blessed? Well, fear God. Letter D. Satisfaction. With satisfaction is the next reward. 1923 says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. That word tendeth means to take care of. And he that hath it shall be satisfied. I like that word satisfied. And I like describing the word satisfied. Because the best description of the word satisfied is that post-Thanksgiving dinner feeling. Where you're kind of, you know, miserable but yet happy. You know, you're kind of full but yet you want some more pumpkin pie. 
You know, you, you, you're so full you can't breathe good, but you still want some more turkey and hope there's some turkey for a sandwich later. You know what I'm talking about? You're satisfied. You feel like just you're just wonderful. You, you, just, feel, you just feel great, but yet you still want some more. That's satisfied. It's not, you know, that's... I wouldn't, you know, try to use that in a Bible college class to pass a test, but we'll use the word satisfied to talk about that feeling that you have when you've been taken care of. Look at the word. Fear the Lord tendeth to life. When you fear God, your fear of the Lord, it helps, it, it helps you, it helps God to use that fear that is a result of your, it causes your behavior to be right. God uses all of that to take care of your life. And if you fear the Lord that way, you'll be satisfied in so much that you're content, but yet you want more. <clears throat> Letter E. Fear the Lord is rewarded, letter E, with praise. Proverbs 31.30. You ladies know this verse well. If you don't, you ought to memorize it. 31.30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. I'm not pausing because I don't know what to say. I'm pausing so you'll think about that. A woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. We can go back and take time and look in Proverbs 31. We don't have time, but the, the, Solomon is telling the story about, um, you know, this lady. And, uh, and, and he's, earlier in the chapter, he's talking about this lady's husband, you know, uh, will, will praise her in the gates. In other words, when he, when he is at work, when he is doing his business, when he's trying to uh, provide and take care for his family, and if he's ever speaking about his wife, if she fears God, it's always going to be in some kind of positive way. He's always going to have something positive to say about his wife when she fears God. And the Bible says, and her children do what? They rise up and they call her blessed. While Proverbs 31 is talking specifically about the lady, the woman, can I, we can take that same principle and apply it also to the man or to the young person. When we fear the Lord, we shall be praised. Is it going to be your friends are going to say, well, my friend Matt, he fears the Lord. Let's give him a hand. No, not maybe, but that's not what I'm talking about. Talking about you know, the, the folks at work or, or folks in your neighborhood or your uncle, your family, your grandma, grandpa, they're going to say, my grandson, my, my granddaughter, I mean, she fears the Lord. He fears the Lord. Let's give her a hand. That's great and that's wonderful, but I'm talking about an even higher praise. It's when God the Father looks at his child and says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou in into the joy of the Lord. With praise. Rewarded with praise. Letter number three. We said the fear of the Lord is described, it's rewarded. In letter number three, the fear of the Lord is commanded. Uh oh. We're commanded to fear the Lord. Seriously? Yeah. And it's not just a suggestion. God doesn't say through Solomon, you know what, be a good idea if you fear the Lord. You know what, if you're having a question about what to do today, you know, if you're thinking I can do, go this way or I can go that way, then maybe you want to think about in your mind, uh, you know, maybe you ought to think about this idea of fearing God. No, it's not a suggestion. It's not even a recommendation. It's not a, this would be a good idea. No, it's a command. It's as much of a command as thou shalt not kill. As much of a command as thou shalt not steal. As much of a command as thou shalt not commit adultery. You name the command, it's the fear in the Lord is as much of a command as anything else. Here's what Solomon says in, in chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Uh, 23, 17 says, Let not thine eye, uh, uh, thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord, wait for it, all the day long. 24, 21 says, My son... 
Fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change. Oh, that'll preach. And meddle not with them that are given to change. It's commanded. Let's hurry through number two. The fear of the Lord, number one. Number two, in the fear of other things. I tried my best to alliterate that. I just couldn't. The fear of other things. There's a few other things, and we're going to wrap up here in just a second. What are some other things that are Solomon talks about fearing? Number one, this is very simple, the fear of fear. That's not a misspoken word. That's the real thing, the fear of fear. Chapter 3, verse 25 says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. I've learned this, and you have too, especially the last couple of years. Trouble is a part of life. So why are we surprised? Why are we surprised when on the news something crazy happens? Why are we surprised when some calamity of life happens? Why are we surprised living in the South when a storm comes through town? We're in the South. Why are we surprised when, uh, when something happens that's negative? Why are we surprised when somebody gets sick? Why are we surprised when dot, 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 this happens? Why are we surprised when something happens? Why do we fear that happening? Oh, no. What if? What if a tree falls on my car? Then you'll pay your deductible and get a new one. Let me read this quote. I have no idea who said it. If we spend our Christian life in fear of what might happen, it's going to be hard for us to enjoy the good things that happen and handle the bad things when they do happen. The fear of fear. Number two, here's a big, I could go on for a while on number two, the fear of man. The fear of man, 29, 25. You probably have this verse in your Bible highlighted. If not, you should. 29, 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. That's a trap, in other words. Imagine a, a, that grizzly bear we were talking about earlier that we are afraid of. Imagine that grizzly bear walking through the woods and putting his foot in one of those snares, one of those pow, and snapping his leg, getting his leg. The fear of man brings a snare. But there's an opposite. <laughs> there's a contrasting thought. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Why do we fear man? Why do we fear man's opinion? Why do we fear man's, uh, man's thoughts? Why do we fear what man's going to say about me or think about me? There's a lot of folks in today, today and I'm being as respectful as possible, a lot of folks in day, uh, today uh, rotting in hell because they feared uh, what their workmates may say, so they never trusted Christ. A lot of folks today live a miserable life out of God's will because they're afraid what somebody in their family would think if they gave their life to Christ in service. The fear of man is what? It's a snare. It's a trap. Number three, and we're done. The fear of the king. 20 verse 2. The fear of a king is as a roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. The king in this context is referring to our authorities, whoever they are. Police officers, uh, boss at work, teachers, preachers, parents, authorities in the church. It's a Bible principle to obey them that have rule over you. Even when our parents... Remember, as a kid, I thought my parents were just so, just so out of touch. <laughs> and they just, I mean, why are you trying to make my life miserable? You know? I was still to obey them. And you, you youngsters today, you know, you may think your mom and dad are just fuddy duddies, and your parents had to explain what that means later. Uh, you they think, well, the mom, mom and dad, they're just, they're just uh, you know, old-fashioned. They're just, you know, living in the 80s. And they just, you know, they, they didn't have fun when they were a kid. They don't want me to. And they're just trying to be mean and, and hold me back. And, and, and no, they, they love you. 
And your parents, think about this, your parents want what's best for you. They don't want you to die early. So obey them. If your boss is a jerk, obey them anyway. Not everybody is like Brother Steve and Miss Lisa and have an awesome boss, you know. Some, you know, some people have a jerk for a boss, and that don't mean that gives us no excuse not to fear him and obey him. No, we obey even our boss when they're a jerk. Teachers at school. Oh, my soul. Some teachers, not you homeschoolers, you have great teachers, but uh, the rest uh, of you, you, you go to a school, you may have a teacher who is just, you know, <laughs> still got to obey him. Still got to obey him. And you notice how Solomon ended that verse? Whoso provoketh him, that's that king, that's that authority, to anger, sinneth against his own soul. If your teachers, if your parents, if your boss, uh, if our authorities, if say police officers, if they want us to do something, we are just wise to do it. If a police officer says, pull over and get your hands up, get out of the car and stop running, you'd be very smart to do just that. <laughs> Solomon said, don't be afraid of anything but God. Let's bow our heads, please, and we'll have a time of invitation. I ask our organist and piano player to come on up and play a song. I ask you to bow your heads tonight, please, and close your eyes. And I just wonder, maybe the Lord has spoken to you today. Can I just ask you, do you fear the Lord? Said, of course, the preacher, I mean, it's Wednesday night and I'm in church. I fought the traffic and we hurried to get the kids together and we... You know, had to drive separate cars to get here. And, you know, we, we haven't even had supper yet. And I'm still wearing my work clothes and all this. Of course I fear the Lord. Well, that's wonderful. It's wonderful. Do you fear the Lord so much it affects your behavior? It, 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 it provokes you to want to please Him? rewards for fearing the Lord. God's promised to bless the believer that fears Him. Maybe tonight you need to find a place here at the altar, right there in your seat, and bow and just say, Lord, I want to fear you again. I think we've forgotten just who God is. Yes, He's holy. Yes, He's mighty. Yes, He's judge. He's also a God of love. He loves you today. He wants you to fear Him in a way that's respectful. Not be afraid, but fear. How about you tonight? You need to make a decision for the Lord. stand to our feet tonight please we're going to be dismissed in just a second I do want to let you know we have a thousand more of our invitation cards come in uh, I guess yesterday or, or Monday and I put a handful out here